Hello, Yanola. Hi, Suzette. Hi, Paul. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Trish. Cherise, can you my word? Let me know how you believe, man. Hi, Marietta. Hi, Shahida. Pamela from, from Krill. Hello, Pamela. You can give a Kali bell. She can't cry. Kali Don Krill. We will try a Zoom meeting with a few people so that we can get a little bit with you. So you can get a little bit with Kali chat. I don't know if you want to get a little bit with him. Good evening guys, I hope you all well. Welcome to another live interactive session. Um, we've been doing this now for the last three weeks. Um, yeah, and so far it's been very uh, informative and uh, I think this is a, this is a, the way we are doing these lives on a Wednesday night. I think we've, we started something that has been quite successful up, up, up till now. So I'm hoping that I get to speak to more of you tonight as well instead of just speaking to uh, our working committee members. I would like to speak to you, our supporters as well. So please send a request if you guys want to, um, if you have something to say. Obviously, I shared a couple of topics on my banner again this morning. I'm just going to go through those topics again quickly so that you guys know what the the main topics of discussion, discussion uh, are for the night. But you're welcome to just, uh, if you just want to say something um, about the UIM or if you just have a, uh, a, just some anything to contribute, you're more than welcome to join me uh, tonight. But let me just quickly go through the topics um, before we carry on. So the topics for tonight is National Economic Empowerment versus BEE and how it will affect our youth going forward. The next topic is creating spaces in which we can have honest conversations without the fear of offending or offense being taken. And then obviously we want to talk about the situation in Tongat, in KwaZulu-Natal with regards to that water crisis over there. I think those people or that community is sitting on day 58 currently without water and nobody seems to give a damn or lots of, lots of promises have been made from... Um, um, city councillors, etc., to go and sort that out, but nothing is being done. So I would like to get some comments regarding that as well from the people maybe living in KZN or in Tonga specifically. Obviously, the big the talking point of the week, I think, uh, is the fuel price that increased substantially. And then uh, any other news of the week that you guys want to discuss, you're more than welcome to do so. And then uh, hopefully... Uh, Eugene von der Westhuizen, who is our national spokesperson with regards to our military veterans for the UIM. I am hoping that he will join me as well tonight to just discuss our UIM military veterans policy that was shared or the released, I think it was uh, yeah, two days ago. So, um, sorry, Sherish, yeah, day 59 without water. So, without further ado, let me see if there's any people waiting to join. I see no one has requested to join yet, so... I'm just going to wait for everyone else to send their requests. Uh, if you don't know how to join, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see there's a green icon of a little man um, that you just need to click. And then it will, I think it will ask you to also uh, send a request and just click on that as well. And then I will receive the request on my side and then I will just approve it so that you guys can join me. Okay, I see we've got our first guest, Mark. Mark. Let me just quickly accept your request. I'm just waiting for Mark to join me. Normally it takes about six or seven seconds. Yes. Good evening, Mark. Oh, hello. Mark, where are you? I'm coming. I'm here. Hi, Mark. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Good. 
please go ahead, Mark. Would you like to discuss any of the topics that I mentioned, or would you like to just talk about something else entirely? I'd just like to listen for right now. Go ahead, Mark. Are we listening? I would just like... I... I would I would just like to listen for right now. Do you just want to listen? Yeah, cuz I'm just new to this and I'm just trying to find out what's going on and so All right, Mark, well then I'm quickly going to sign you out so you can carry on listening to the live, but um okay. if you send a request okay. obviously it's to join me on this live. So you are sharing the screen okay. with me at the moment. So I'm just going to sign you out or just to yeah, cut you off and then you can just carry on listening to every, any, everything else, all right? Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Kurt van Yerden. Obviously, you guys know that Kurt, uh, Kurt's been doing lives on a Friday afternoon or Friday. Yeah, fr I think it's Friday afternoon at one o'clock. Kurt is our national spokesperson for our youth movement. So, Kurt, it's nice to have you on board. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Hey Jacques, thanks for being here, man. Thanks for being here and thanks for having me here. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, it's a pleasure. I, I'd like to add that um, our first topic of discussion tonight obviously was a topic that you suggested. It's National Economic Empowerment versus BEE and how it will affect our youth going forward. So I think there's no better person to answer that than you, since sure. you were the one that suggested me adding that to my list of topics. So please go ahead, Kurt. Sure. I um, I think um, let me just greet the United Independent Movement family and also greetings to our president. Um, we love and miss him so much and we know he's coming back stronger. Um, so and also thank you to you, Jock, for doing such an amazing, amazing work and, and job. We know you've been working hard behind the scenes and thank you so much. We honor you and we celebrate you. So, Thanks, um, yeah, I think if, if, if we're going to continue with, with BE, I think, you know, if not more than over 50 percent of our young people is going to leave South Africa in the future. And my concern is that, you know, the bigger percentage of young people that's going to be leaving South Africa um, are going to be the educated ones, are going to be the ones who says, you know what, I'm going to take my skill, I'm going to take my, my, my craft, I'm going to take it to another country. Because, you know, just the term black in and of itself, I don't think that is what the future holds for South Africa. You know, we should not get to a point um, where there's one race benefiting within South Africa. That is not equality. You know, that is still um, pushing one agenda. So black economic empowerment is definitely not what um, is going to build South Africa in the future. So national economic empowerment is the way to go. Um, um, and if we go national economic empowerment, that means that a greater percentage of our young people that's currently in, in study, studying for architectural designing, studying for doctors and lawyers, these are the young people that needs to build this nation. And if they're going to um, step into a future that is still branded under the banner of black economic empowerment, you know, why should they stay in South Africa? That's my concern. So I'm saying if we don't make the shift from black economic empowerment to national economic empowerment, I'm afraid that we will always still um, claim to be a democratic South Africa, but we are actually not. Yeah, that's very true because we are keeping we are keeping certain terms alive. I mean, certain concepts we are keeping them alive with BE. Sure. Obviously, if people want to get rid of discrimination completely in this country, then they need to get rid of BE because that's a huge, that's a very big form of discrimination. Still, uh, yes. I know what the purpose was, well, what the what the intention was in the beginning, but it's I mean, uh, you've heard Neil say in the past as well that you know the way it was intended and the way it's being handled or managed or um, implemented is completely wrong i mean and it's it's just another form of discrimination and it's weakening our country actually and it's lower it's lowering standards in this country yeah you know and i think it's what nelson mandela said if i'm not quoting it correctly then maybe you can just help me he said if the anc government does to you what the apartheid government done to you then do to the anc government what you done to the apartheid government so exactly. you know, if, if a black astute leader, uh, Nelson Mandela, could see this thing coming, why are we still holding on to how things started? I think the introduction to BE was to equalize, but not to have one majority rule over the minority. And I think BE is being used for exactly that in South Africa. 
it's where the majority um, know that they are the majority. So let's keep it black economic empowerment. And if that does not change, I'm afraid that the greatest opportunities will not be seen by the next generation of leaders. Yeah, you know, concepts like BEE and all this stuff, you know, these types of concepts normally are, they are normally impl uh, um, implemented in countries and those concepts are normally applicable to minorities, Yo, not sure, majorities. Sure. And in sure. this country, it's a, we've got a very weird situation that there are rules that are benefiting the majority. Yes. And normally yes, it's the other way around in most countries where, you know what, where people, you know, implement or come up with, with concepts such as these to help the minorities or to strengthen the minorities. But in our country, it's, a complete, it's the complete opposite. Our min minorities are not looked after. Sure. And all these rules benefit the majority. So it's, yeah, it's something that must definitely go away. And uh, like you said, you know what, unfortunately, the people that do leave the country are the ones that, um, it's, 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 that, it's, those, it's, the, it's our educated people. It's our, sure. we are losing, we're losing out on so many skills. And, um, 100%. Yeah. Sure. You know, they asked, they asked Tony Leon one day in an interview, Jacques, and they asked him the question, how does he feel, you know, um, running for, for, for president in a country that's, that's dominantly, you know, black? They asked him that. Um, and he could not answer that question. Um, and I think what we need to identify with great severity what's laying ahead in 2024, you know, we cannot endorse any, any um, political party that still tries to push a racial agenda. And black economic empowerment is doing exactly that. So, you know, with our votes and with our support to any political party, if we even sense a hint of one race um, being, being, being driven to the front, then we, need to, then we need to reconsider voting for a different party. And that reconsideration must then go to the United Independent Movement. That, that, that's the party that um, we're not going to force down everybody's throat, um, but it's humanity in it, has the most soul in it, has the most heart in it. Um, I got a call from, from a guy um, in Cape Town um, this week. He actually spoke about you, Jacques, and he said, you know what, um, on quote, he said, and I'm paraphrasing, he says this, um, when I listen to Jacques and you guys talk, um, I've decided not to listen to any other politician because you guys speak from the heart. You guys speak from the soul. You know, and I, and I hope that he's on this live because he says he doesn't miss a life. So people are tired of segregation. People want unity. And we got to spearhead that with everything that we have. That is why national economic empowerment, I'm afraid, will never happen under any government besides the United Independent Movement. I believe that. Oh, thanks, Kurt. No, you are 100% correct. Uh, I think we are the only party that is, uh, you know, making big statements about this specific concept and speaking out against it the way we do. So, but thanks for your input and thanks for giving me such a great topic of discussion today. I'm glad that you uh, spoke about it. It's something that, um, you know, it's, it's something that normally gets spoken about everywhere you go. I mean, when, you, when you're visiting friends and you're having a bride, this is stuff that they generally that always comes up, you know, it's uh, and I think, you know, what I've spoken to so many black people that actually regard this as a slap in the face because they also feel that, I mean, they don't want to be labeled as, or they don't want to, uh, you know, these very qualified black people in South Africa that have, sure. that have um, achieved what they had, have achieved through hard work sure. and on sure. merit. Yes, but they will also they will always be labeled, you know, because of this black economic yes. empowered uh, yes. uh, concept. It's a slap in the face, actually, for yeah. them. Sure. No, we got to change that. We got to change that. And in 2024, I'm telling you, that is why every person on this live, every United Independent Movement follower, you know, we have to ensure that we are on the ground telling people about the United Independent Movement, you know, um, inviting people to this page, sharing the word, you know, doing what we need to do. Because if we don't get a change in government in 2024, then we might be the people that leave South Africa. Exactly. So we got to bring Good. that change. Good. Thank you very much for joining me. And I also want to congratulate you on the great work that you do. Sure. I mean, we watch all your videos and we are, you are so involved with the youth and you go to schools and you speak to, you're traveling all across the country doing great work. Um, sure. 
for our youth and we are sure. very proud to have you with us so from my side and from the rest of the uim as well thank you very much and keep up keep it up thanks up 2024 it's going to be our year thanks good thanks up thanks bye bye I am just trying to add Arnold Dupis, Dupisani. Arnold, so I'm hoping that you that I can connect you. I have just uh, um, accepted your request, so hopefully I can get you. Oh, there we go. Arnold, how are you? Good, thank you, man. I'm so glad you're here on this live. Yeah, I just need to get the jacht off, need the jacht off, and I have decided I will maybe not get a little bit of a what Kurt has said. I will go over to English so that everybody can just understand for our colleagues and everybody, our UIM members. And I see, uh, you know, we are at 142, so that's wonderful. But we need to get the word out there. I just want to elaborate on what Kurt said. I think, you know, he just summed it up so nice. Um, unfortunately, our young people, our young qualified people, South Africans, not whites, blacks, whoever, South African qualified young people are leaving this country. Um, I think the, the, the big problem we have is that we're not creating jobs. Um, the fact that we're not creating jobs, I mean, if you're an engineer, um, you need to be, you know, you need, if you're qualified as an engineer, civil, electrical, electronic, whatever, we need to make sure that these people are looked after. We need to get them in our system. Um, you know, I think looking back at black and economic empowerment, uh, um, I think um, late Adiba had, had a different view on what they really wanted in the country. Um, and and, and uh, I know that education was one of his um, most important uh, um, uh, driving uh, factors. He wanted that all South Africans um, previously disadvantaged, as well as all the South Africans needed to be get qualified, to get into schools, to get the opportunity to go to university, and obviously qualify and empower ourselves in that way. Um, I think the, 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 you know, if we look back now, um, uh, it probably would be better if we had qualified people um, helping people getting into certain um, positions and make decisions while they were maybe not specialists in those areas. I mean, Neil spoke about it so many times. If you look at a minister of health, you need someone in that position that knows medicine, that knows medical terms, that knows the, 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 whole, um, the whole spectrum of the health system. If you look at a minister of police, not disrespect to anyone out there at the moment, we need to have somebody that is a specialist in policing. If we look at a minister of defense, we need a specialist in the defense force, someone that is a specialist, that has a degree in military um, speciality. You know, so uh, I, I, I think, you know, obviously one, Part of it is the fact that we need to create jobs. I've said it before. We are the country with the highest percentage of unemployment. We don't need that after 27 years of a democratic South Africa. You know, unfortunately, you know, if, if the ANC made it work, we all would have been happy and we all would have gone there. But they haven't proved themselves. The only thing they proved that they said they're not capable of turning this country around. And I believe that the UIM, I mean, you know, I'm a very big supporter and I'm a believer and um, it's the only party in South Africa that I've, that has actually answered my questions. And, and, and from our side, you know, national economic empowerment is all about empowerment of our youth. Exactly what Kurt said previously. You know, you, 
we need to make sure that our young youth must be educated. They need to stay in this country. We need to, I mean, I remember Neil saying, why don't we get the youth into a one-year um, uh, service to the state? Wherever we put them, they will give one year of their life to the state, and the state would actually give back to them um, the opportunity to go to university and get their studies paid for. You know, if we don't loot money in this country, the millions and billions that is looted, we could actually make sure that the poor is uplifted. We can make sure people get, you know, have food on the table. Um, unfortunately, in, in, in this country at this moment, it just looked like just some people or just a selected few was empowered by black economic empowerment. And that is the, the way that Madiba wanted this to happen. And uh, that's just what I want to share tonight. I mean, I'm passionate about South Africa. I'm passionate about UIM. Um, and it's the only party that's going to take us forward. If we don't make this change now, we're in big trouble. And we need to understand that this, this, this message needs to come out. We need to make the difference and we start in our own companies. I mean, I have a business and we, we are trying to empower people. We need to make sure that wherever you are in a business, running a business, make sure that you live that because that is in the end, the integrity, the, the, the trust, that's where we're going to go. You know, so from my side, love you guys. Love the fact that you're working so hard. We're all out here to make it a better country. We're not asking money. We're not asking, you know, we don't, we're not enriching ourselves by serving people and serving South Africa. We need to stand together, unite as a country, unite as citizens. We love South Africa. We were born here. You said it last week. I don't want to go to another country. I'm in the South African. I'm an African. I was born in South Africa. And I am proud to be a South African. And I don't want to go to any other country. I don't want my children to leave this country. I want them to be educated. And I want them to, to give back to this country. And we're going to do this together. You know, so uh, again, thanks for the opportunity. And we out here and, you know, we will be supporting. And we will get into the trenches and we will uh, together we will. All right. So you have a nice evening, all you are members. Love you all, and I'm so glad to see uh, Neil. You know, he's on his way back. He's fighting this. I told him when, before he went to hospital, this is a little uh, rugby World Cup he's fighting, and we know he's going to win this cup for us. So we, we can't wait for him to be back. Uh, so, yeah, have a nice evening all, and we'll be, I'll be listening. All right. Thank you, Arnold. Thank you very much. And thanks for the great input. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Guys, yeah, it's, it's awesome to have you guys uh, share this live with me. Um, we are getting some, you know, it's very informative. And, uh, the, you know, the stuff that you guys are saying, you know, it's, it's, it's just, I'm just happy to know that uh, the UIM is, um, you know, there's so many people involved in the UIM at so many levels. And, uh, you know, our supporters um, feel the way they feel and are saying the things that they say. It's, uh, yeah, it, it makes me proud to be a part of this party. I would just like to, before I add the next guest onto this live, I just want to quickly say hello to Neil, our president. I see he has joined this live. He's watching. Um, I know he's also been going through a tough time. Obviously, all of you know he's still recovering, so he's not uh, back to full strength yet, but we are looking forward to having him back Um as soon as possible but neil welcome welcome thank you for for tuning in and thank you for watching this live and i i know that everybody that's uh, talking tonight or joining or speaking uh, about the ui i know that they are all making you very proud so thanks for joining uh let's see who's next on the list muhammad shafiq shafiq I think everybody in the Western Cape knows Shafiq by now. Shafiq has been our Western Cape regional chairman since the party was registered. And Shafiq has been with the UIM since the very beginning. Shafiq, and Shafiq, it's nice to have you at last. It took some convincing, but I'm glad you joined. 
And I think Shark thanks you. Good evening, all UI members, supporters, followers. Please join us to become members so we can take the UIM forward to 2024. Thanks a lot, Shafiq. Shafiq, and yeah, you and me spoke before um, a half an hour ago before I started with this live, and you mentioned something to me that you want to. Um, well, it is something that was actually started quite a while. It was started last year. It was something that you and Neil were very much involved with. And that was that community watch program. You know, you remember CRU. And uh, you said that you, you spoke to me earlier and you told me that that's something that you really want to, um, you know, start up again. It never really went away. But, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's been in the background a bit. And it's something that you really want to get going again. And I think that's a that's a... That's, that's an amazing idea. I think CRU did amazing work last year. I was privileged to go on one or two of your patrols one night and uh, I saw firsthand what you guys were doing. And I mean, you guys literally brought crime down in two areas, two very high crime areas in, West, in the Western Cape. You brought the crime down in those areas with your work quite significantly. So I'm, I'm glad that you phoned me and that you told me that you're interested in starting this again. So Please tell us a bit more. Tell us about what your what your plans are, and what you're planning, and yeah, what uh, how people can obviously join and uh, and support and help. Yeah, Jacques. You know the program was a success for us. We ran Luwanle, we did Mitchell's Plain, and Luwanle was our two main focus points with the highest crime rates. We brought the crime down. You can say about seventy-two percent. It took a lot of work from us, but. I want to bring the program back, man. Myself, I'll have Neil join me again on the road when he's fit to serve again. I'm going to sit now with different police stations, colonels, and see how I can introduce it back into the community. But using the police program that they started now, this community in blue, get members of the public to sign up with them. So do we have the backing of the police? Unfortunately, the police is under staff, like we all know. There's the, the, the amount of police to citizens ratio is completely out. So the more citizens we can get involved with SAPs and work alongside them. Now, for me, it will work because I've done it again in Lentegia as well. It worked there. We're busy taking it over to Athlone Police Station now. Where we're going to start off this weekend with community members that side. To get them on board because we have a massive problem with crime especially like if you look at one typical example the play as an area in belgravia it's an informal settlement but everybody there knows all the gangs hang out there police can't go in because they get shot on so now what we're trying to do is to get more people together so that we can support give this the police the backing they need so we can maybe keep it like we used to do keep parameters for them while the police do their jobs nobody gets out without being thoroughly searched by the police. So automatically we can get the guns, the drugs off the street. Because at the moment, like we saw in uh, Noah Park, a video went viral, Cowboy Town. Where does criminals get firearms, R1s, R4s? Where do they get it from? Man? You can't buy it out of a shop. So they are getting it from either from the police, corrupt police, that is, we know there's corruption there, but we need to get our community involved to keep an eye on the police. So that is why I want to bring this program back and get it into every police station in Cape Town and right around the country so that we have eyes watching them so they can do their work and serve the community as they are supposed to. So what I'm thinking of is we will sit in the week next week with Neil and we'll see how we can put the policy together and we can introduce it to the people and we can get feedback and they can give us what their thoughts are on it and that we can better our program. We know it works, but you know, with the more heads involved, especially we need security companies to get on board. We need ex-military, ex-police to get on board. We need those guys so they can give the normal civilians training as a private, in our private capacity, give them the training that we can. And then they volunteer their services to the community. So with the amount of kidnappings, rapes, child abuse and woman abuse, we need to bring that down completely. And murder, the murder rate has to come down in our country because we are now one of the top capitals for murder. You know, we think marks, we were at, uh, in the top 10, the best uh, holiday resorts 
holiday places. Now we're going to one of the capital murdered states. So yeah, and you see, so Safi, that's the that is also the difference. You know, this is one thing <clears throat> that we are very that we are very outspoken when it comes to crime. We said that we will have a zero tolerance to crime and criminals in this country. Um, and we mean it, you know, and uh, this is why we're not just talking and, and we are actually doing something about it. I mean, the videos last year went viral, you know, all Neil's videos. He used to go and patrol every Friday night and every Saturday with you. And I mean, there was yeah, so many uh, footage lines. of that that there's people been... saw last year, you know, and that's the difference. We, we, we are not just sitting here making statements and talking. We are actually doing stuff yeah. we are physically getting involved and i mean you guys have put your lives in danger every single weekend for about almost a year if it, if, if yeah. not longer so yeah that's just uh yeah, yeah. It's, it's you I guys setting you set a great cool. example and you keep on setting great examples for the uim so like you know it wasn't quite blanche it wasn't etv it went uh a film company from France came to do it, to take it over there to see how it will work in their country. So now we know it works. So John, if, if we can, can get make this from the public and then, you know, we can grow this thing and we can make it really make a difference. Yeah, and we, we can, can make this it. a so national it. effort. I mean, it, it, there's no reason why this should only happen in the Western Cape. This is something that needs yeah. to, you know, this is something that needs to be implemented all across South Africa. But it's going to start with yeah. the UIM. It already started with the UIM. So I'm looking forward to sitting with you and Neil and discussing this. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with, the ideas that you guys come up with. At some point, we will also uh, release our own UIM policy on crime and criminals. And I think this is going to tie in nicely with that. So, and this is, uh, you know, we, you, our policies currently, you know, if you look at the structural breakdown of our policies, We've always got a vision, a vision, we've got a mission, and then we've got duties as the UIM. And you know what? Um, if people ever ask, what is the UIM doing about crime? Well, this is exactly it. So. There you go. That's correct. Right. Thanks a lot, Shafiq. Thanks. Thank you for joining That's me. Pleasure. You've got That's no excuse pleasure. not to join me every Wednesday now from now on. So the ice has been broken. Thank so you. thank you. Thanks, eh? Cheers, eh? Thanks, Shafiq. Bye-bye. Guys, are there any more requests? We've still got a lot of co uh, topics to cover. I would like to uh, ask Eugene. I don't know if Eugene is having any difficulties uh, joining me. Are you, he's supposed to talk about our UIM military veterans policy tonight. Um, ah, we've got a request. Nadia Heinz. I think you all know Nadia by now. She spoke last week. She's our national youth coordinator, and Kurt is our national spokesperson, obviously. And uh, yeah, Kurt um, was the one that um, came up with the first topic of discussion for the night, and Nadia actually gave me the second topic. Second topic being creating spaces in which we can have honest conversations without the fear of offending or offense being taken. So that was Nadia's contribution for the evening and I told Nadia, well, if you uh, give me the topic, then you need to come and answer that question. So hello, Nadia. Good evening, everyone. Nadia, please explain to the people what do you mean with that topic? Um, what is, what is, just explain to the people what that means and then just say something about it as well and just, yeah, answer the question or just do your bit. Okay. Okay. Um, so the question actually came from one of um, our youth, um, an 18-year-old, um, regarding how can we create a safe space where we can have honest conversations without the fear of people taking offense. Um, and I think with a lot of things that's going on around us, um, everybody has to tiptoe around each other not to say certain things or certain words and maybe offending someone else. So when I thought about how to answer this question, um, I don't know if people know this book. Um, a few years ago, it's um, a book by Dr. Arnold Moore um, called The Need to Be Right, Understanding the Way We Behave. And I think, if, um, with, I think with all the racial divisions and all the things that we have to talk about, um, doing that co um, conflict resolution and bringing reconciliation and having honest conversations, I just wanna um, just wanna read just a few just a few lines um, on these 
approach on handling conflict successfully because I think this will actually answer how to deal with this and how the baseline, how to get to a place of having honest conversations without taking offense. In mindset, this is um, there's a win-win approach when dealing with conflict. So that it's um, the win-win approach um, is where a person addresses the problem, and the win-lose approach is where a person um, tackles the person. So, and I think um, in a sense of where we are in our um, how we deal with conflict normally around us with racial tension, um, normal conflict situations, a lot of times we tackle the person instead of the problem and that and that's when offense is taken when it becomes a personal thing instead of just focusing on the issues um so one of the things he said was um when it's the win lose approach it is in the me against you approach the parties see the, each other as opponents that is being on opposite sides the us against the problem approach on the other hand implies that the two parties get on the same side and tackle the problem, not one another. Um, and then um, the other parties to get on the same side, however, it is essential that each party acknowledges that the other person is also right, um, not just the one side. And then the last piece is, it is only when the two parties acknowledge that the other one is also right, that they will be, able, be in a position to ask the um, the key question, so how can we solve this problem? Um, so I think this kind of, this is a baseline how we can have cons um, conversations, bring reconciliation across all the borders, youth with other youth, um, cancel out that thing of people taking offense when we focus on the issue or the topic instead of attacking the person. So that's, yeah, that's my answer. Yeah, you see, I think another, th uh, uh, I'm glad you, that you actually addressed this tonight because you know what, we as South Africans tend to quickly play the race card when we don't disagree. Um, uh, it's something that we have experienced in the URM ourselves. The moment you don't disagree with somebody or the moment you don't want to do things their way, you know, sometimes that race card comes out and that's all, that's tackling the person instead of the problem. And I think in South Africa, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a South African thing. I f think, unfortunately, because of our history, that you always revert back to the person and the person's race instead of you know arguing about the problem, especially when people from different races are in argument with one another or when they don't dis when they disagree, then normally it becomes a racial issue or a race matter or whatever, and that shouldn't be the case. I mean, I think if, if if we could just start addressing problems because, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the problems with, that we normally discuss affect all of us. It doesn't just affect certain people or certain races. You know, the fuel price that has increased, um, the, our poor, the poor service delivery in this country, it's affecting everybody. It's not just affecting white people or black people or Indian people. It's affecting everybody. And people tend to forget that. And that's, a, that's one department in which I feel that, you know, I wish people could just wake up, you know, because, you know, the, the people that vote for the ANC, 90% of those people are still, in, also are still living in the same conditions that they lived in prior to 94. In fact, I think they are even living in worse conditions. But they still vote for the ANC. They still believe in those promises that get made every five years and... People must start to wake up and they need to start realizing that there are other parties and people out there that also care about them. It's not only the ANC that cares about them or that claims to care about them. Other parties, we have moved beyond um, the apartheid era. It's been 27 years since, you know, that time in our country's history. We have moved on from that now. You know what? There are actually people out there of all colors and races that cares about all the people in this country. So people must stop putting their faith in the ANC because they are either afraid that, um, you know, things will return to the way they were if the ANC is not in power or in government. That's never going to happen again. The people of South Africa will not allow anything like that to happen ever again. So I think it's time for people to stop um, being scared. I think a lot of people are scared, and that's why they keep on voting the way they vote, because they are afraid of change yet again. But I think change in this country can only be good. Um, it's time for us now. I mean, people, 
just need to look around them and to, to see what's happening to this country. And I think for those people out there that are still die-hard ANC supporters, I think those people need to start realizing that there are actually other political parties that also care about them. I actually believe that the ANC doesn't care about them at all. They only care about certain individuals. And those are the individuals that have run away with our country's money and budgets and that keep on stealing all, this, all, all the country's money. And they don't care about their people. If I, call it the, if I can call it their people, let's, say, let's call it their supporters. They are not using that money that they steal for the benefit of the people or for the benefit of their supporters. They are using it to enrich themselves. So it goes into their own pockets. People need to start realizing that. Thanks a lot, Nadia. Thank you. It's always good to have you, uh, yeah, to listen to you. You are, you are a very insightful and intelligent lady, and you always, you always make sense when you speak. So thanks for joining. I try. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye. Guys, any other requests? The whole point of this live session is for you to, uh, yeah, I'd like to hear from you. I don't want you to, I didn't prepare any speeches tonight, so I would like to hear what you guys have to say. So please, please send a request. Please join me. I would like to hear what you guys have to say. Is there anybody out there that would like to discuss the fuel price increase or any other relevant news of the week? Reinhard for you, Reinhard. Just waiting for Reinhard to join me. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? So I just wanted to to say that um, thank you for doing what you guys are doing. Um, it cannot be easy, I know. Um, and please excuse me, I'm already in bed. But it's it's actually shocking to see what is going on in this country. And for me, as a young person of 25, I don't, I don't agree with it, and I don't know a lot about politics, because I was also one. I was also one of the people that said, "Yeah, politics doesn't concern me," because I was focused on my own thing, day to day, living. But I've come to realize that, yeah, you should be involved, and that is why my vote will be going to the UIM. I was actually. I was so disappointed in the DA in the last elections because, yeah, it's just, I'm not going to go into any details, but they, we know. Um, and just to refer to you last week, your life last week, where you talked about crime. I think crime in this country is beyond, it's out of control. We need to bring back law and order. If we don't bring back law and order, we've got a problem. And like Neil always say, and Neil, just a shout out to you. Thanks for what you're doing. You can, you and your team can save this country. I believe in you. The other people believe in you. And you know what? Those people who criticize you, ignore them. Because they are the ones that's putting you down. And actually, those people that criticize you are in is actually the ones that should be participating, interacting on the lives. So, yeah, my message today is just thank you and may God bless you, keep you safe. And yes, just if you guys are in Parliament in 2024, just do me one favour. Please keep the EFF and the ANC accountable. Because yeah, I, it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, and a lot of people say, um, uh, because I read the news daily, so yeah, but thank you, and 
Have a nice evening, Peter. Taina, thank you so much. And well said. Well said. Thank you for joining. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you very much, Reinhard. I see Reinhard's name pop up many times on the screen when we are doing our lives. And I saw him, see him on Facebook constantly commenting on our posts. So I know Reinhard is a big UIM supporter and fan. So it was a privilege to meet you tonight, Reinhard. Thank you very much for joining and sharing that. And thank you for all the nice things that you said about the UIM. I appreciate that. You don't always get complimented. Um, most of the times... Uh, people are actually trying to put you down. So it's very refreshing and it's very nice to hear. Uh, so thank you once again from your side. Albert, I see you on live. You have better now invitations to you than a Joanne? Joanne, where are you? Don't hide. We've got, a, we've got another guest joining I'm not going to pronounce his name just yet because I'm afraid I'm going to get it wrong. But I think it's Yalmar Andries on sale. As I, as I could not miss it. I don't know where I want is. Goedenavond, Andries. Is it Yalmar Andries? What name is you? Yeah, yeah, that is Yalmar Andries van Seilzaak. Goedenavond, Elmer, hoe gaan we jou? Goedenavond, dankie, nie, ja, goed man. Ja, luister, um, jylle doen baie, baie goeie werk. Ek, um, my, my hele punt is, wat ek oor wil praat is, if we the people that voted the government in, in the ANC, whoever, doesn't matter who is there now, we the people that voted for them, the people must remember that the government work for us, we don't work for the government. And, my point is, why can't we vote them up? Why is there a system blocking? Um, if you had a, a, a referendum thing, then um, they would change it. Um, if, if we are so many people here that can vote, and, and vote them out and, and, and vote somebody in, so, uh, why... Why must I wait till 2024 if everybody, I mean, you got full, I'm got full, uh, everybody, we see what's happening. We see what's happening in the road. It's not nice. It's not nice. People getting killed, and some people are somehow getting killed for nothing. And if you look at the guy that needs a bit of bread, nah, nah, you don't even know if you want to give him bread along the road because you don't know what they're going to do. Uh, we also, I'm here in Komiki, Capri village area. Um, I own a scrapyard. I've got uh, people that come to me. Uh, you know, I give every day. Every day there's people that's walking in and out there by me. And they want my business there. They don't want my business to be closed and taken away. And this COVID thing, COVID thing all the time. And then they want to change everything. So what are they doing now? Now they're putting everything up and nobody has got anything. Um, even a businessman, a small businessman like me, I suffer also. I suffer. We're all suffering. So what must we do? Must 60 million of us close the country? Or 20 million of us go sit on the N1? Close the N1, close all the in roofs. What are they going to do to us? What are they going to do to us? What can they do to us? So my point is, I voted you in there. I voted for, I won't say who I voted for, but it's my choice. Oh, well, my, my vote is definitely by the, by the UIM. I mean, I've been with Neil De Beer for quite, quite a while now, since he started and everything. And, and but yet... We still got the people coming on Facebook and degrading the man, degrading him all the time. When are the people going to wake up to what is actually going on in the country? You know, I don't want to be here tomorrow and there's nothing left. Um, and, 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 and our kids, I hear he's talking about educating the kids if he wants to be an engineer. Then... 
There must be plans made for them. And I've got family that's in England. I can go tomorrow to England. I can go next week to England. Um, they stay there. The government is supporting a lot of them. A lot of them are getting supported. They don't have food. They don't have a place to play. They work on a system, uh, the friend of mine that's there now. Uh, if a child needs shoes, they give her a voucher. And she goes and she goes gets the shoes. She cannot go buy alcohol with that voucher because it is for the shoes. And that is why I think everything is just upside down at the moment in South Africa. But the people must still have the faith. They must always have the faith that things can change. I see there was a man last night again on Facebook attacking Neil the Beer. And then I sent him a message and he sent me a message back telling me, and maybe he knows the Bible better than me. I doubt it very much because he doesn't know who I am. But if these people come on, the admin must immediately take these people off. You know, it is as only Sam can stand him on, as only as if we're not gonna unite, then we've got a problem. And we need to unite. You know, if when they said, when Debbie Allison have said they're going to, to Parliament. I made a plan. I went to Parliament. I stood there. I protested there. So I say, if um, everything carries on like this, then why don't we just stop everything? Why don't we just stop and we go stand in the middle of the road if they're doing it and they... They, 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 get, they get answers. Yeah, we're sitting and we're not getting answers. Now, fuel is even up. Can you imagine a couple of weeks' time what is going to happen taxi-wise? It's going to go up. What are these people? How are these people even going to get to work then? So we need to unite. And, 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 and Neil has asked it so many times already. Fatima has asked it so many times. I listened to Cornell. I was for five hours with Cornell. For five hours I sat with him one night when he came on and we spoke. And I just think that Osmo Sam Stanman. For throwing a year, for throwing a year, but the alcohol on, but the alcohol on, gaan naar jou kijk. Die kijk is oop. En I'm all fry, I'm a washi keg, washi keg, washi keg. What's fault with you? What's fault with you? You must also go with the keg. So, it's a uh, wakker. That's my meaning. I have to wake up. Very thank you, Jock. Thank you, Elmer Andries. I appreciate it. Thank you that you joined it. And thank you for your insight. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, guys, he's making great points. Uh, you know what? At the end of the day, the only way we can remove the ANC or change this country is if we unite. Because, as he rightly said, the people put the ANC in government and only the people can remove them. Um, and people need to start realizing that there is power in numbers and that the people actually have the power to, to change this country. No organization is going to do it. No political party is going to do it. The people of this country can do it. They can change it. If they really want change, and if they really desperately want it, and if they want it enough, then they, they will change it. I just sometimes, I, I, I hear what he's saying. Once again, there's people out there making negative comments and breaking people down. You know, it's time for us to start moving away from uh, personal issues with people. As Monya Rachesnaria rightly said tonight, you know what, stop tackling the person and tackle the problem. Um, we're not always going to like one another, but you know what, we've got, this bigger, we've got bigger fish to fry out there. And your opinion of somebody is at this moment in time, I think, is irrelevant. If that person is doing good work and if that person is trying to make a change, support them. Whether or not you you like him or agree with him, if he is doing something good, support the act and support the effort. To everybody out there that has personal issues with people, I will support anybody that does anything good. I don't care who that person is. If that person is doing a good deed, I will support it and I will help if I can. doesn't matter if I don't like the person. 
there's a lot of people I don't like. But if those people do good things, then I will support it. And I think if we start adopting that attitude, a lot of things are going to change. And a lot of things can change in a very short space of time. But people need to uh, change their attitudes. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I know what uh, Elmar Andres is talking about. I see some of these comments and some of these people making comments. Um, but anyway, at least there's, there's a lot of good people out there that are trying to do good things. We must just support those people. And uh, you know what? The rest must, hopefully, eventually, their eyes will open up or they will get with the program. I see we've got another supporter joining us, Una. Ina, Ina of Una. Jylle, jylle moet my verskoon, jonge. Ek is slecht met al hierdie name. Uh, I think I have lost Ina or Una. Ek weet nie hoe spreek die mens aan naam uit nie. Um, guys, is there anybody else that would like to join? Uh, yeah, we have been almost busy for an hour now, so unless anybody else has something to add, I'm going to be ending this live shortly. Um, there's still a lot of you that I would like to hear from, especially some of my fellow working committee members. Uh, Joanne, you said you were going to join me. Are you going to join me? Did you mean later or next time as a next week? or after the previous speaker. I think Joanne, I gonna, I gonna for Joanne we can bus go here, so I gonna be up his spot. So come Joanne, gesel speak with ons. Albert, Albert Oberholzer, also a member of our working committee. Let's just see if I can, uh, yeah, if Albert manages to connect. I see some of the people out there are having connection issues. Or connectivity issues. Let me, let me speak proper English. Ah, I see Albert wasn't able to connect. Um, it says the guest declined the live. Or, yeah, he's, I don't know what happened. We had that problem last week as well. All the load shedding and all the nonsense going in, on in this country. Um, guys, yeah, we didn't get to touch on the military veterans policy tonight. Unfortunately, I see Eugene had some issues connecting. Um, he struggled to connect and join me tonight. Uh, we will be discussing that military veterans policy. We will try to discuss it next week, Wednesday. Or I'll maybe see if I can, maybe you, Eugene can just do a, a short little video for us that we can post so that he can explain that to you in detail. Um, that's very important. And then uh, also, um, obviously, you know, Tongat, I've been hearing that word or that name for the last couple of weeks. I think the last time I spoke about Tongat in KwaZulu-Natal was when they were without water for 30 days at that stage. And um, as I pointed out tonight, they are currently sitting on day 59. That's 59 days without water. In a country like South Africa, I mean, we are supposed to be a modern country with working infrastructure. How is it possible for communities not to have running water? And I mean, how, how difficult is it to fix such a problem? I mean, we've got qualified people in South Africa that can fix that. It's impossible. It, it's impossible for a community or for a town or for people not to have running water for two months in a row. And nothing is being done about that. That is shocking, actually. That is shocking. Um, but yeah, welcome to South Africa. Uh, we need to change this. We need to fix this. We need to make sure that this stops happening. We need to fix this country. We need to save this country. Time's running out. We are two and a half years away from the next election. I cannot see the country surviving for another two years if we keep on if things keep on happening the way they are, fuel prices have increased, people's salaries are not being adjusted with all these um, increases in, in prices of, you know, basic 
items that we use every single day. I'm talking about food. I'm talking about fuel. People's salaries are not being adjusted with all these price increases. So it's 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 just going. Uh, you know, it's it's it, the situation is just getting worse and worse. Um, Albert, yeah. Let's see if we can get Albert to connect. Let's give him another chance. Uh, yeah. No, sorry. No, Albert can't connect. I don't know what the issue is. But Albert, thanks for trying. In any case. Um, guys, yeah, I'm going to end this live tonight. Thank you for everybody that joined. Um, I'm glad that we, that you, our supporters, are also starting to interact with us. It's very important for us to hear what you have to say. Thank you for the great input, uh, Andries, uh, Helmer, Andries, um, who, uh, everybody that joined tonight, everybody that uh, um, had something to say. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for making the effort to speak to us. Um, I'm hoping to have more of you join me next week, Wednesday. So please take the opportunity. If you guys want to share something, if you have something to say, please, uh, we have created this platform for you to speak, to speak up, to speak your minds. And to, um, we are also, you know, and, and it's, we are also learning from you as well. We don't have all the answers and you guys are actually assisting us by adding your comments or, you know, giving your input as well. So, Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Um, yeah, keep fighting the good fight. Please support us. Please uh, get your friends to join as well. We need to grow this party. We need to spread the word, spread the message, um, reach out to other people. We are currently sitting at 20, 20,000, 21,000 members on our official UIM Facebook page. We need to get those numbers up. Uh, we need to make sure that more and more people get to know about the UIM and more and more people get the opportunity to hear what we have to say. So, And that's going to take a massive effort from everybody, everybody that is supporting us. Um, this is an, this, our growth has been organic um, up until now. We have not been given any opportunity to speak on TV or, or we are not give, getting opportunities to speak on radio or uh, we don't have any media coverage or newspaper coverage. We are trying to grow this party on social media at the moment. Um, we have very limited resources. So you guys can make a huge difference if you just share these videos and speak to your friends and families and neighbors and ask them to do the same so that we can uh, make this party. Um, yeah, it's already a force to be reckoned with, but we need to make sure that we spread all across South Africa. So, guys, thank you for joining me. Thank you very much. Have a great evening, and I'll chat to you guys soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye.